Hey everyone, it's that time again uh, for Sun Alexander's uh, Sith Acolyte armor tutorial. Uh, should be a correction that it could be used for a Jedi as well. Uh, one thing, or yeah, a quick note from my uh, previous video uh, stating that uh, the materials needed. There's two things I didn't tell you after the paint would be, or before the painting, for your foam armor, you're going to need this. Uh, it's Plasti Dip. You can uh, get this from Home Depot or uh, any place that has a paint department, I believe. Uh, it's about $6 a can, but that stuff's pretty awesome. Um, I tried the other method of using Elmer's glue, watering it down and using that as a coat for the foam, but it dried and cracked and I just, maybe it was because I was using wood glue, but I didn't like the way it turned out. So, um, fortunately I didn't ruin my armor because I did it on my original armor and I didn't like it. So I just plasti dipped over it and, uh, it worked great. Saved, saved it. You're going to want to do a couple coats of plasti dip. Um, on your armor. I did, I think, three different sprays, uh, back and forth motion, just quick bursts, um, and it came out really good. The other stuff would be a protection agent for your paint so it doesn't chip. I just use Krylon um, clear varnish. Uh, you can use the enamel stuff if you want to. I think that's a little expensive for just foam armor. So I just got that. That was just a quick note. So. For this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the chest piece. A um, couple notes about the chest piece. You can see it's actually um, the same piece, just mirrored. And um, you're going to have to get one of those um, fabric measuring tapes. You can use a ruler, but it's really hard when dealing with uh, 3D images, especially things like your body. So get one of those. And this is going to be just kind of a basic tutorial to show you how I did things. Again, you can use Pepecora to get the actual plans and you can build them out of the cardstock if you want to, or you can get those and build them out of foam. If you want to pay the price, that's fine. I did all this completely by trial and error and eyeballing it. So it's not perfect, but I was very happy with my efforts. So um, this was the model I used and this is the section obviously right there. So I didn't do the little circle piece, but uh, in retrospect, I know how to do that if I really wanted to. I would take the same kind of black nylon cloth that I used for the inside of my mask and the eyes, and I would just stretch that here, since it's black and it shows up, it wouldn't show up on the, uh, the black shirt, and then just glue the circle piece to it. So if you want that circle piece, you can do it that way. Um, I may actually go back and do it since it's not that big of a deal. But um, if you have an eye for detail, you can do this, uh, and it's not too terribly difficult. Um, really, my chest piece is just um, four big sections, the same here as well as here. So what I did was I made one section out of cardstock after I got my measurements for my chest. Um, this is the foam sheet that you'll be using. It's uh, just about an 8.5 by 11 sheet. It's actually 9 by 12, so it's an inch longer on each side. Um, and the template works perfect. So this is what I used. I used two of these um, for the front and back section. So you just kind of figure out where it touches on your shoulder and on your cardstock, on the big sections of cardstock, just trace along the side so then you can know what you're working with here. Um, after you get your measurements on the cardstock, see, big cardstock, you get your measurements and cut it down so we just, uh, oh, bloody hell, where did it with my pencil? There you go. So get your section. And of course, my pencil doesn't work. Awesome. Be right back. Pen. <laughs> so, writing utensil. Doesn't have to be perfect, just something close. You know, give or take like that. If you were using a big piece of cardstock, then it would be easier to measure. Um, do that, and then draw out your pattern. So, 
cut it in half and just focus on the bottom section because remember everything above like everything up here is a raised detail so this section is a raised detail this is raised this isn't necessarily raised but on mine I made it raised but all of these just ignore so really what you're focusing on is just this bottom section and the way I view this section is that it actually contours to your rib cage it's protecting your rib cage so when you're making this think of the curvature of your ribs you know where it meets your organs and and there's no more there's no more boning so that's what you're going for that's this section here this should frame your rib cage and then this section up here I actually cut I didn't like um, this corner piece because if you see on here I don't know how well you can see it but it's actually pointed and I don't like that because um, for me with the way I did my measurements um, I made a smaller section and it just it just didn't look right I didn't like how short it looked to make it adjust for my my shoulder so um, I made it bigger I made it frame all of my my rib cage and uh, what have you and then I just cut that section two reasons one I didn't want to I didn't want to warp the chest piece as I was wearing it because this is your weakest section right here and um, I didn't want to keep poking myself in the sh with the shoulders when I moved or swung the lightsaber or what have you and uh, two is it's going to be hidden by the cloak anyways so really there's no point in having those corner pieces it's don't worry about it just get rid of them so anyways after you cut your cardstock out um, this is about what I came up with as you can see the corner is still here because I never altered it you can just cut the foam uh, to contour to you so this is how it should look once you get it all in and with cardstock it's kind of tough because yes you get your template out but you you don't account for like the quarter inch of foam so it may come out wrong uh, don't worry you can always trim it it's not a big deal um, that's why you do it out of cardstock first so you're not wasting your time so once you get this section cut out and um, again you can use peppercore if you want to buy the stuff and save yourself the time um, but I literally cut all of this out after trial and error just putts with it for a bit you may make it too big cut some sections figure it out once you get your template and then you you uh, are happy with it put it on the phone and trace it out so you just trace it out and um, and then razor it or you can use scissors it doesn't matter but that's all you have to do and for these little stickers here sometimes they peel off other times they don't you can you can use them without or with it or just take your heat gun on the low setting and go back and forth on it for a few seconds and it'll just peel right off and there's no residue or anything like that so basically you'll just want to cut two sections of this out and then you glue them together in the center you just glue it right here and to reinforce it I did um, three different blocks of scrap foam to help because you're going to have really weak sections here and then here on the bending parts um, also you'll notice that mine is curved that's what your heat gun is for once you get this section cut out before you glue it because if you heat gun hot glue it just melts again so get the section cut out and then you heat it up front and back on the high setting just make sure you're not burning a hole in it just go in a back and forth motion over the whole thing you know it may take you about 45 seconds to a minute to heat the whole thing up and then once it's all warm and you'll know it's malleable you'll take it and you'll literally form it to your body and hold it there and then once it's cool you take it off and it should stay if it's not quite there yet heat it again and force it back into uh, position do that again for the sec the second side make sure it works you can always spot it spot treat the sections to make sure they bend enough and as a note while I'm thinking about it once you get this thing glued together after they're formed uh, you may want to take some of your uh, fiberglass resin and you may want to paint the inside um, and I kind of wish I had done I, I had done this on mine. Uh, paint the inside on this weak section, this whole section here, um, 
probably from here all the way around, uh, just coat it with resin. It's going to strengthen it. It'll make it so it doesn't um, rip and fall apart on you. And I don't think this will because of the way I made it. It should stay just fine, but um, go with that. So once you get this section together, you have your base template for your chest piece. And I actually have work in progress photos um, on my Facebook page in the uh, WIP sec and the WIP folder um, showing this section once it's glued together. So then from there, you just um, again measure to your own your own measurements because I can't tell you and show you everything since every person's different, especially in in the chest area. Uh, for women, if you want to make a female Sith acolyte, you can do the same thing. Um, you might want to give yourself a little extra room depending on your bus size. Um, but heat the section as well and form fit it. Same deal. You just press it in and make the section longer. You can bend it up. Um, I haven't, to be fair, I haven't done um, a bust on a woman before for armor. But I, I would assume that you would make it slightly longer and then heat it and then, you know, kind of bend it up. So you can, you start with straight but then you would bend it like this. So that would give you uh, that template. Once you get everything formed, you're going to want to uh, make your top sections, your 3D raised sections, which all this is is just a, um, a section that I cut out out of cardstock to make sure it fit, and then I cut it out of foam, and then I flipped it over and mirrored it as well. Then I heat gunned those to make sure that they would fit on them, uh, fit on the uh, chest piece, and I glued them in place. All the raised details are just scrap foam. Uh, this is This section is eighth. Uh, eighth of an inch, so it's not um, too bad. Uh, this is quarter inch, this is quarter inch, this is quarter inch. Um, these sections here, these were lowered details or pitted details. So what I did was um, I just cut the whole section out. I measured it to where I wanted it. I cut the whole section out and then on the back I just took eighth of an inch um, sections of foam and I glued over the top of it. So it shows the inside but it's not see-through. Um, and on this I just scored the uh, um, the foam halfway through and then I just took my razor on the inside and I just saw it on the inside and uh, cut it out and just took it out. Um, you can sand it down a bit and then you're good to go for that. Same thing with here I just I just cut out my corner pieces uh, for attaching it, I used the nylon straps that I talked to you guys about. I did two. Um, I did one buckle, which is just across the back here, and then I did shoulder straps. And I didn't make them adjustable because I wanted it to be tight. Um, but what you can do is glue your sections here. Just use hot glue and stick it right on there. And then if it's too big, just fold it over and fold it over and hot glue each section until you're happy with the placement of it. So, till you're, you know, mine was kind of sitting down here a little bit and I wanted it more up here. So I just glued the foam, or I just glued the uh, straps until it was solid. And then if you want to secure them even more, just uh, hot glue sections of foam over them. And that's it. After that, I plasti dipped it a couple times and I dry brushed it with my brush. Just going back and forth like this. You know, paint off most of your paint first and do that. Um, you can add um, lightsaber marks. Uh, I was thinking about doing this. You can use like your, um, uh, oh, what's it called? Soldering iron. You take a soldering iron and wait for it to get hot and then just s do a quick slash or you can hold it on there and it'll, it'll melt and warp the foam. And then you can paint over it and paint it black or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, as you can see here, I just um, got a I've got a mark on it from my helmet from where it pressed into it. You can do that too. You can just press things into it. It's foam. It's it's malleable. So uh, that's the chest piece. Um, the details are up to you. And again, this this section of armor, just like I call it the Sith armor, but the template's the exact same for Jedi and Sith. There's very few differences um, in the old Republic style of armor for the uh, trailers, uh, the trailer armor for Jedi and Sith. Um, really the difference between this one 
and the Sith armor is the Sith is painted silver and black, and um, the Jedi armor is more of a bronze or a goldish color. They do kind of earthy tones, so uh, you could simply paint this um, a bronze or a silver. You could do the dry brushing if you want weathered effect, or you can do a bronze armor with a spray paint if you want, if you want it polished and looking nice. Uh, then you have your Jedi armor, so same deal. Um, other than that, there isn't too much else to crafting foam. Um, I just, I made the templates myself. So, um, yeah, just go with it. Uh, can't think of anything else. Ah, uh, Dr. Pepper. Yeah, hot glue, heat gun, foam, Plasti Dip, paint. For the chest piece, if you don't mess up, you're looking at about not including tools that you would have to buy anyways. Um, $10 maybe to make this. Four pieces of foam, uh, a nylon strap, one buckle, which you can get for literally $1.49, and some paint. You're going to need Plasti Dip for the whole thing, so I don't really count the Plasti Dip and the paint into the mix, but if you're going to use acrylic paint, it's $1.49, and my one bottle of acrylic did the whole armor and the helmet, so... And the Plasti Dip is like $7 spread across the whole armor. I only used one can. Um, so yeah, if you divide all that up, it's about it's about 10 bucks, uh, as long as you have the tools necessary. Um, that's about all I can say for now. Uh, stay tuned for the, the next tutorial on how to do um, more of the armor. If you have any questions, uh, message me on YouTube, um, or you can find me on my Facebook page. I, I respond rather quickly. I get email notifications, and I really like helping people. So um, most of the people that have watched my videos and asked me questions, I would think, uh, say that I'm, I'm rather quick to respond, and I'm, I'm a decent guy. So. Yeah, check it out. Send me a message. Um, you can also, you know, post your pictures of things that you've made on my Facebook page. I, I enjoy seeing it. I know Stealth does too. Um, same deal, man. Just if you've made stuff that I've helped you with, post it on my Facebook page. I I love to see it. I can comment. Um, other than that, stay tuned, guys. Thanks.